Hi, it's Steve. Today is day 26 of this 30 days of video series and water fasting at the same time. 26 days, it's coming to a close. A number of people have asked me to continue the series after 30 days. Um, some people have squawked about the fact that I'm just f filming all these on my iPhone and that I could do higher quality things. Um, but the real reason I've been doing this series is just to get more practice doing videos. And the fact that I you know, get to do them in a way that provides value for people too, that's great as well. But I'm not really intending this to be high production values here. I can do more of that later. Um, but uh, for now, you know, for a 30 day trial where I've got to do videos every single day, I just wanted to keep it simple, not have a high bar for the ex execution of these, um, but still be able to provide some value to people who want to, you know, have a reason to watch these videos. Uh, the update on the water fasting, that's been still going well. Uh, you know, I've, I've noticed I've had a really even, um, you know, pretty stable energy most of the days recently. Uh, it's really good for productivity and working. I notice my mind is very sharp and clear most of the time. Um, my physical energy kind of goes like up and down a lot, but mentally I've been feeling like very stable energy flow. I've noticed that I don't need as many breaks uh, and when I'm working. It's like I have really good mental endurance. I could work for a long time. Um, I'm, I'm noticing, I think, more of a, uh, a s more subtleties in how my energy is physically too. Like I'm getting better and better at being able to predict how much I can handle physically. Like if I can go out for a walk, um, even when I'm sitting down, I can feel like how energetic I am on the inside. And if I feel it's, it's a bit low, I know I have to stand up um, and, and pause a little bit before I start moving because my vision might black out for a moment. And or I, or I might start to get dizzy a little bit, but other times I can feel like, oh, I have more energy right now. I can just get up and start moving and not need to to do that pause phase first. So the energy physically varies throughout the day, but what? But uh, mentally, it's really stable. So that's kind of an interesting thing. Also, I'm noticing that emotionally, I'm just like very calm, peaceful, centered. There aren't really highs or lows emotionally. I don't feel bad. I don't feel like extra good, uh, you know, for the past week or so. It's more just like this really even emotional phase. I would describe it as being perpetually content. Like every day I just feel content and calm. And that's kind of interesting because I think a lot of times we think of motivation as coming from this like raw, raw type of energy. And that's not the type of energy that, that motivates me. It's, it's, you know, that's the kind of like riled up thing that burns out really fast. But if I want to sit down and just like work on a big project for weeks at a time, I want to have a, a calmer feeling like of contentedness. And I guess it depends on what kinds of work you're doing. But the, for the type of work I do, where it's a lot of sitting at my desk these days, then for that, you know, having a sense of calmness and good, clear focus and mental alertness, that's the best phase to be in. So I'm really happy about that. I'm finding that working is really nice for taking my mind off of food because <laughs> when I'm not working, then it's, it's so much easier to like go out to the kitchen and Rochelle's making something or eating something and then I get th thinking about food again. Um, and it's not, it's not that I'm hungry per se, but I do miss food a lot and the smells of it and the sight of it make me want to eat, eat it. So uh, if I work a bunch, it just takes my mind off that and I don't get distracted. And so it's, I'm actually working probably, you know, more than most people would on a, on a water fasting period because I actually find it really helpful for just avoiding thinking about food all the time. Um, Let's talk about, oh, let me give you an update on uh, Conscious Growth Club. Uh, I, I decided to make a change in it today to open up the early access phase to everybody who wants to join now. So we have 62 members so far, which is wonderful. That's, that's great for this far you know, along. Um, we only opened up the early access membership about 10 days ago, although for some people it was shorter than that because I started sending out the invites over a few days. And uh, you know, now that people who are on this um, very small early access notification list 
all got their notifications and they've had plenty of time to think about it, whether they want to join right away or hold off on the decision a little bit, uh, I decided to open it up for everybody else. So if you now go to consciousgrowthclub.org, uh, you'll see uh, the page for it, the web page for it, and it has all the details about how it works, and there's sign-up links there too. So if you want to join now, you're welcome to do so. And I, and I also um, posted a news item about this on my website and emailed my main list about it too, so I imagine we'll probably have a bunch of people signing up in the days ahead. Uh, so that's, some, that's something that's uh, cool to see. I wasn't expecting to do so much with the early access phase, but so many people have been connecting in the groups and, and enthusiastic and excited about it. And I'm just seeing like this beautiful community already created with just the, you know, the dozens of members we have already uh, that I think um, it's just a, a, it's a beautiful opportunity to, for people to join in early on if they want and get started right away. So, you know, the discussion forums have been going great. I think we're up to around 2,300 messages posted now since we opened it up. Um, and I think it's around 175 or so uh, discussion threads. So a lot of those are just people introducing themselves and everybody's welcoming, welcoming them. But people are starting up discussions on a variety of topics like relationship challenges and addiction and um, uh, raw foods and, and veganism and... Um, you know, just uh, oh, pat, you know, talking about like income generation, and so that's really cool to see. Also on the consciousgrowthclub.org um, page, I added a list of some of the suggested courses that people want me to develop first. So as we go along, I'll be developing courses. In fact, that's one of the main things I'll be working on for the next um, next couple months at least is going to be developing these video courses and hence the connection with this video series, which I'm doing to get more comfortable and just you know get experience talking to the camera. Uh, that I will have higher production values on. In fact, I'm just sort of filming this in the side of my video studio right now. Um, I, in fact, I can even show you what it looks like if you want to see it. So I've got... Uh, and I've got like this, these sound blankets and this filming area set up and this back, you know, blue backdrop and everything. So there's like, you know, the sound blankets really dampen the sound. This right up here is a $600 um, hypercardioid condenser microphone. So I've got it just out of the camera, camera frame. Got a tripod. I mean, I've got like everything I need to do, you know, really cool videos in here. So, um, you know, I, I set that up um, months ago in preparation for this. I haven't, I haven't used it for this um, video series. I might, I might for one of the last few days of it. But uh, uh, again, I wanted to do these videos just really casually and not do it, you know, so formally. But I have this all set up for doing the formal videos um, with, you know, better production values for Conscious Growth Club. Uh, so it's. Uh, you know, it's 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 uh, it's really cool to see just like all the interactions that are happening there, and um, you know, I'm sure we'll have new people joining. Anyway, uh, let's talk about today's topic, which is breaking the rules. So this has to do with your relationship with society's rules, like what are the norms of society, and to what degree do you follow them versus violating them? And this is a decision that conscious-minded people just have to make all the time. Um, you know, we have to decide, like, are we going to follow the rules or are we going to break the rules? And, um, you know, if, if, uh, if you get caught up in just always following the rules, it really severely limits your opportunity to grow. Because society puts just a lot of lame harnesses on us that slow us down. Um, you might have encountered some of those, but I'll just share some of these that you'll probably have to deal with on your path of conscious growth. Uh, first one is, is health. This is one of the ways where, especially living in the USA, I mean, the health standards in this country absolutely suck. <laughs> I mean, to be, to be just perfectly honest, they're just rock bottom. Um, I mean, it's just like so high in all the things we probably shouldn't be eating, you know, chemicals and um, animal products. Uh, you know, in this country alone, we slaughter about 10 billion land animals every year. <laughs> um, it's pretty ridiculous. That's about a million an hour or around 300 per second. You know, every, you know uh, just like, and that's not even counting fish, uh, just the land animals. Um, 
and you know the it's it's like clear the damage this is doing to people if you if you've read the book the china study you've seen one of the most massive studies on how animal protein is basically a trigger that switches on cancer cell um, generation it's it's uh you know one of the best ways to get cancer um, and if you follow the rules of society and all the propaganda put out there and you know these um these huge industries have massive marketing machines that just infect the science and you know, people have done studies showing how, like, the science funded by, um, by the animal products industry is just, like, so ridiculously bogus. And how, um, you know, you can see, like, how so many of the studies funded by this industry, when you track the funding, it's, it's all, um, you know, very pro, uh, pro eggs, pro eating, f you know, animal flesh, pro dairy. And then you look at the ones that are independently funded and they just trash them, <laughs> you know, tra trash those types of results. They come up with just exactly the opposite results. So do you want to trust the ones that are funded by the self, you know, the self interest, interest in the study's results? Of, you know, of course not. Like, you know, they just keep funding more and more studies until the scientists spend and, the, you know, they pay off the scientists. And these scientists, some of the ones that were really corrupt, they just move from industry to industry, you know, working for the, the cigarette industry or the plastics industry um, and just, you know, saying all this nonsense uh, for the money. And it's a shame because it really degrades people's trust in science um, when you have this kind of corruption there. So, you know, the... The, if you follow the rules of society or you look to like the government for advice, you're just going to get absolutely pathetic, ridiculous advice that's much of the time the exact opposite of what you should be doing. So this is an area where you have to do your own exploration and follow your own path. And I wish, you know, we would have like really awesome science that would just be so truth-based, you know, you could trust it. Unfortunately, we don't live in that kind of world right now. And so... You know, to, to a great extent, you have to do your own research and experimentation. And yes, there's risks involved with that. Um, I've definitely found, like, that's, that's the way to get results in life, is just to do your own health experimentation. And even though you might be using yourself as a, as a guinea pig a bit, you're going to learn so much on this path. And, and it's just ridiculous how far you can go. When I think of how my mind is today and, like, how clear it is and how easy it is for me to do certain things, like, writing is just you know, absolutely ridiculously easy. Um, it's, you know, and, and my level of fear has gone down so massively from when I was, you know, younger, like as a teenager. Um, just all the things my body used to generate, you know, internally and in my mind and my thinking um, on a crappy ass diet. Um, like, it, you know, I remember eating a lot of fast food and it's, it's you know, that's that stuff I got into like on my own. It wasn't my parents' fault or anything. It's like I fell into that when I was in college, you know, getting pizzas and and having the, all this dairy and you know, and then starting experimenting with with different um, ways of eating, going vegetarian in '93 and then vegan in 1997, and just noticing the results. And for me, the results weren't so much physical, although I did get a big boost in endurance physically. Uh, so it got me into distance running and doing martial arts, which is all that boost of energy from going vegan. But the best boost was just mentally and emotionally, and just like feeling so much, so much more emotionally centered. And it was amazing just to see, you know, like the further I went from the way society eats, <laughs> the further I went away from the, you know, the average, uh, the, the happier I was, the, the better I felt, and... Uh, and, and the, the, you know, the, the more productive I became. And it affected so many areas in my life, like income generation and things like that, because when you, th when you think more clearly, when your brain works better, um, it's, you know, that's, that's your main tool for getting results in life. Um, what else? You know, well, I mean, another health, a health aspect is um, not smoking. Uh, you know, I live in Las Vegas, and, um, you know, there's a lot of people that smoke around here. You know, they come to the casinos and they smoke up the place. Um, or when I travel to Europe, I'm just like shocked by how so much of the culture is still invested in smoking, despite the fact that smoking is stupid. <laughs> I mean, we know it's stupid. We know it's one of the most idiotic things you could do, you know, smoking cigarettes. You don't want to put that stuff in your body ever. Um, it's just so ridiculously bad for your health, and yet people do it. And so if you live in a culture where it's rich in smoking, you just have to say no to that and turn against it. Uh, you can't let that kind of, you know, thing infect your habits because it's just going to drag you down. Um, what about what about on the social side? Um, friends. 
you can you know you can fall in this pattern of just inheriting the friends that you grew up with or making friends of through your job like coworkers and you know that's what a lot of people do they just make friends from their immediate environment but to break the rules here you can s deliberately seek out higher quality friends people who are more compatible with you people who are growth oriented people who are a better match and the rule here is you know don't allow yourself to fall into forced relationships whether it's friends or even family members you're expected to hang out with all the time, if you don't feel like a strong residence with these people, um, you know, let those relationships slip, let them slide, and deliberately put um, more conscious people in, in your life. That is such a huge part of your personal growth path because when you fill your life with really conscious growth-oriented people, you'll find that the friction that was previously there before for so many changes you wanted, wanted to make just evaporates, it's gone. I hear so many people you know, talking about all the friction they experience when they wanna grow or make some kind of change, they wanna have a new lifestyle direction or start a new business, and they're constantly bogged down and getting stuck by friends and family members who are critical of them and who you know, like even shame them for even wanting certain things. And it's absolutely ridiculous. And so that's a rule you just have to break. And you just say, you say no to that kind of stuff. And you, you, know, you seek out your, uh, your own social circle and build that. You can build it from scratch. Um, I, I tend to get the best results when I inherit somebody else's social circle. Like I steal it. Not steal it per se, but I borrow it. So I make one friend who already has a big social circle and I get invited into that and boom, now all their friends can become my friends. So you don't have to like build this one person at a time. You can do it that way and I have done some of that, but it takes forever and then you often end up with just all these individual friends all in different places and it's hard to get them all together. Uh, so, you know, I, I've joined different groups, networking groups and things like that or clubs where I just once I get into a certain social circle, I inherit all these friends all at once. And that, I find, is great for really moving my life forward socially. Uh, in fact, that's one of the reasons I decided to start Conscious Growth Club is to be able to provide that opportunity to more and more people because I see how many people in my audience are also isolated. And many of them, you know, they only, they, they don't know anybody who's into conscious growth or they're, they maybe have one friend um, and, you know, in that area, and then everybody else in their life is just social drag and friction. Uh, so, you know, if you've never experienced a life that's rich in friends uh, who are into conscious growth, it's just amazing, you know. And I, I say that in a very general sense, because whatever change you want to make, you can make a group of friends who are into it. So if you want to be an entrepreneur, make lots of entrepreneurial friends. Or <clears throat> if you want to, you know, get into health, make a bunch of friends who are in the, the type of health lifestyle you want to create. And the key here is don't settle. You know, don't settle for relationships that are just beneath you and less than what you want. Um, you can have a life that's really rich with encouraging and positive and supportive relationships. Uh, it's, you know, for me, that's normal. I want that to be normal for you too, but you've got to raise your standards to the point where you just stop stop following society's rules like you're supposed to stick with the current network you have just because it fell into your life or it just evolved over time or it's just filled with family and coworkers, you know, just like the people you connect with where you show up. You don't have to follow that kind of rule. Uh, what about your career path? You, you can just follow, you know, follow, you know, whatever shows up um, and you know, get a job like everybody else, but you don't have to. You can break that rule. You can you know, design and create your own career path, however you want it to be, and combine it so that it really supports your lifestyle and gives you a sense of purpose and generates abundant income. I mean, you can have that whole package. I think of it as the body, mind, heart-spirit uh, heart package of career. So the body is like you, you need a career that meets your, meets your needs. You know, it handles your your physical needs. So it, you know, pays the bills and it gives you food, which is ironic because I'm not eating right now. But, um, you know, a career that, that covers your expenses and even gives you a sense of abundance. And the mind aspect is that your career um, challenges you mentally and it's a good fit for your skills and it's helping you grow and improve mentally. Uh, the, the heart aspect is that you like it, you love the work you do, you enjoy it. And that doesn't mean like 100% perfect love all the time, 
but say, you know, 80% is good, is a good standard to go for. Like 80% of the work you're doing, you enjoy it. It's, it's maybe contented work or even like you love it. Um, and then 20%, you might still have to deal with some crap, but you know, that's pretty normal um, for people who are on a conscious growth path. There's always a few things you may not want to do that's just part of your work. And eventually you can, you know, work on delegating or outsourcing those things too if, if, uh, if you go that route. But the idea is to get a really strong alignment between what you enjoy doing and what you're actually doing. And then the spirit side is like you're making some kind of contribution. You're making a difference in the world. You're doing things that feel purposeful and meaningful to you and fulfilling. Uh, so that whole package of the body, mind, heart, spirit is not something that society just throws in your lap. It'll say, hey, get a job. You need it to pay the bills. And you end up with a boss. But the truth is you don't need a boss. You know, you can break that rule. I haven't had a boss since I was, I don't know, like 22 years old, something like that, 20, 21. Um, and, and you just don't need it. So you can, you know, you can skip that phase entirely. You can design your own career if you want. Now, yes, this does take some conscious effort, uh, but the effort really pays off well. Um, I love it. I love this approach. I wouldn't want to just like fall into something that was, um, you know, some cookie cutter society version of a career. I, I want to create my own. Um, I like going a fairly unusual path. I like having a career where I can travel anytime I want and take time off and um, have interesting growth experiences and do all this, you know, interesting and unusual um, Lifestyle, lifestyle experimentation. Um, I, you know, I like, I like not having a boss. I like being able to center my life around personal growth and turn that into a business, which to me is not something I was taught how to do. I just had to figure out how to how to make this happen along the way. So if you go this path, you get to create your own rules. You get to figure out, you know, what the rules are that you want to follow um, and develop your own path as you go. What about income generation? You know, that's something that ties into career as well. Like the standard income generation model is you basically get a, get a job, somebody else pays your salary, and you're making lots of profit for them, and you get a small slice of those profits. And there's, you know, there, you're paying a lot more in taxes that way too than if, you're, um, than if you run a business because you can't deduct as many things. So with, you know, with a business, um, you can deduct all kinds of expenses, like all the investment I make in my personal, personal growth and the experiments I do, that's fueling my business. So I can, you know, I can, um, I can deduct those from my taxes, perfectly legal to do um, for this type of business. All the educational expenses I have, um, you know, traveling to speak at events, things like that, it, it, the, the business pays for it. And I'm, I'm not having to use after-tax income to pay for those types of things. You, um, you know, you can create your own income streams. You can design them and, and, and you know, do things un, that are unusual. Um, you could follow standard models, but you don't have to, like, just, you know, use what fell into your lap or what you were taught growing up. I like making a lot of income passively or, you know, various creative means. Um, you know, for example, a good, a good passive income stream is uh, if you write a book and you have a publisher publish it, or you self-publish it, you get book royalties. So I had a you know publisher publish my book in 2008, Hay House, and since 2008, I'm still getting royalties every year. So and I don't have to do anything to do that. I don't really promote the book, you know, much other than just having links to it on my website, and I, uh, um, I you know, I, I haven't touch the book, you know, in terms of writing or working on it since, you know, 2008 or so, or 2007, I think, is when I sent them the final manuscript. So it's, uh, you know, it, it, you don't have to follow the standard income model. You can create whatever income streams you like, but you have to create your own rules for that. What are your own standards you want to follow? You have to say no to society's crap, basically, and say, you know what, I'm not interested in this whole job thing. I just want to go my own route and figure it out. Yes, you'll make some mistakes along the way. Yes, you'll fail now and then. So what? The, the good news is that as people pursue these kinds of paths, eventually they figure it out. Um, I see so many people, you know, they just dabble in it for a month or two and then they give up. Well, those, aren't, those people aren't really serious or committed. Um, the ones who are committed, though, they make it. They figure it out. It takes them a while you know, usually longer than they expect. Some of them hope to be able to create abundant passive income in their first year, and that usually doesn't happen. 
Um, but it usually takes less than five years. You know, typically like two to three years, they start really start starting to kick it up if they're serious about it and they really work on it a lot. Uh, it's just a matter of creating your own rules and sticking to them and just not falling back into society's rules that tell you how you're supposed to be. What about productivity? This is another area where you can set your own rhythms. If you like being really lazy, you can have a lazy approach to, uh, to productivity. Um, and, uh, you know, if, if you're if ever, ever familiar with a company called uh, New World Library that publishes a lot of personal development and spirituality books, one of their most famous ones was The Power of Now by Eckhart Tolle. Um, the, the founder of that company, um, Mark Allen, he, uh, he wrote a book a long time ago called The Millionaire Course, and then a, which is a great book if you've never read it. And another one he wrote was called The Type Z Guide to Success. And he calls himself a Type Z person instead of a Type A because he's not like this crazy hard worker type. He likes working four days a week. He just says he doesn't work on Mondays. He likes to just putter around his garden, get up, you know, go back to bed later, take another nap, um, and, and have some pretty lazy days. So he was like caught up in the society's rule initially that you're supposed to really work hard and achieve. And he just found himself too lazy to follow in that model but yet he became a millionaire just with his own lazy approach to success. So he changed the rules and that's great. You know, he found out what kind of productivity works well for him, not working crazy long hours, but finding out how to work with good focus um, in just four days a week and taking the rest of the time off. And you know, it, it works for him. I like a different model. I like to be able to go fast. I hate when people try to put the brakes on me artificially. I like working in bursts of energy, you know, just like all out for maybe a few weeks and then maybe taking some extended time off after that and doing, you know, a totally different type of mode of living for a while. Uh, that's what works really well for me. Sometimes I'll work even and steady for a few months, um, but, you know, the, the bursting approach, like just a lot of um, long days, like 10, 12 hour days, uh, work, works really well when I'm very motivated, um, follow, you know, followed by time off. So I, you know, I define those rhythms at, at, in a way that works for me. And you can, you know, you can establish your own rhythms when you get control over your career and your working, uh, your working routine. If somebody else dictates your schedule, well, who chose that? You know, like you chose that. You decided to put yourself in a situation where somebody else dictates your schedule. That makes sense if the way they dictate your schedule is very well aligned with you being your most productive self and you getting the results you want. If you're getting good results from the work you're doing and the schedule that's dictated to you, great, wonderful. But if it feels out of alignment, if you feel that the rule, rules that are being thrown onto you are not helping you be your best, then you know talk to whoever's giving you that schedule about changing the rules or just change them yourself and deal with the consequences. Um, many people do that. They just come up with their own custom schedules. You know, especially today, more and more people are finding they just don't want to go in the office all the time. And so they're, they're telecommuting um, a few days a week or, or several days a month or, you know, or a week out of a month, things like that. And that's totally fine. You know, you create the rules. So, and if your company doesn't like that, well, get a more modern company to work for <laughs> um, or go on your own path. The, the key mistake here is tolerating what you don't like and settling. You know, it's, it doesn't make sense to do that if you if you want to really live a rich and abundant and fulfilling life, you've got to make the rules that work for you. And you've got to learn and experiment to find out what those rules are, what works for you, what makes sense. And they're going to be different for every people. You know, a rule that works for me um, may not work for you. But, uh, you know, you're not, going to, you're not going to find out by just following society's rules. You've got to start breaking those rules and experimenting around the edges to figure out where your sweet spot is, you know, where your sweet spot is health-wise and relationship-wise and in your friendships and in your career and your income generation, your productivity and your spiritual path and all kinds of other things. It's like, where are your sweet spots that you need to satisfy? What are the rules that are important to you? You know, do you need to do yoga every day? Is that important to you? Is that something that puts you in the sweet spot of feeling great? Um, for me, I love going running. Um, haven't been doing that during the fasting, but like that's to me like one of my rules is daily exercise. It makes me feel good, and 
the truth is, you know, you can change these rules over time. You can massage them to go in different directions, uh, shift them up a lot. It's just a matter of finding a path of integrity to you being your best self. Be utterly shameless about breaking the rules and the norms of society that just don't align with you, that don't help you and that don't fit who you want to be. Um, you know, go for the standard of win-win or no deal. This was the standard I learned from, uh, from Steve Covey uh, in, uh, I think it was in his book, uh, The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, where, you know, one of those, one of those habits is think win-win. And he says, if you can't get win-win, then go for no deal. Don't go for win-lose. Don't go for lose-lose. Don't go for lose-win. Um, make sure that if you're following a rule of society, it's a win for you, and it's a win for whoever else needs that rule or who's enforcing it. And if it's not a win for both sides, dump it. You know, drop the rule. Say no to it. Um, there's, you know, there have been many occasions where I've, I've had to do that. And I just say, no deal. I don't accept that offer. If the offer doesn't look like a win for both sides, just say no to it and create your own offer. And you may not get an acceptance from the people who originally gave you that offer, um, if they don't like your version of win-win, but you'll probably find somebody else that does. So if you're in a win-lose relationship, say no to that, decline it. Move on to a relationship and hold out for win-win. And the more you keep your standards that high, the happier you'll be in life and the more you're going to enjoy your path of growth. Uh, the most important thing here is to be honorable to following and defining your own rules. You know, like have a deep sense of honor about respecting your rules and, and adhering to them as best you can. Figure out what matters to you, what's true for you, what rules serve you, and honor them. Follow them the best you can. And the rules that don't, dump them. I'll see you tomorrow.